All right, so to get started with our examination here of React testing library, the first thing that we're gonna do is take a look at the Jest test runner, since Jest is what will actually take care of running all of our tests in most React applications. Now, first of all, let's create an empty React project using Create React App, since this will allow us to kind of build out some basic components and see how those are tested using React testing library. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say npx, create react app and then the name of our app which we can just call something like react testing library and then we're going to say dash dash use dash npm which will use npm as the package manager for this project and once we've generated our project we're going to just open that up inside visual studio code by saying cd react testing library and i'm going to open that up by saying code dot and you know, if you're using something other than VS Code, or if you don't have that set up in your terminal, then you'll just have to do Control O or something like that to open up your file. You know how to open up files, so not gonna spend too much time on that. Anyway, once we have our project open, I wanna take a look inside source and open up this app.test.js file. Now we haven't really paid too much attention to our test files up until this point, but but basically all of the files where we'll write our tests are gonna have this .test.js suffix. And just by convention, we usually name the files almost the same thing as the file that they're actually testing the code of, right? So you have app.js and the tests for app.js are gonna be in app.test.js. Now inside here, you'll see the basic syntax of jest tests. And jest is just what's called the test runner of our application, okay? So a test runner is, as you might expect from the name, it's basically the runtime that takes care of running all of our tests, right? So it, it'll go through and actually find all of the test files, it'll put all of that code together, and it will run all of the different test cases that we create for our application, okay? So that's why we need Jest, right? Because React testing library doesn't include a test runner by default. So, we just need Jest to, again, put all that code together for us and actually run our tests. All right, so anyway, inside here, you see the basic syntax of writing a test. All we have to do is call this test function, which is something that Jest makes available to us without even having to import it, right? We can just say test inside our test files, and it will create a different test case for each of these things. All right, so anyway, the first argument that we see here is just a basic description of the test, and this is for our own purposes, right? This basically tells us what it is we're testing inside the test, and it's very important to put a little bit of thought into this. Don't just say it works well or something vague like that, because when you're trying to find out why a test fails, right, which is kind of the whole point of tests is to fail when you break something. When you're trying to figure out why that happened, this is going to be your first point of contact with the tests you wrote. So if you see, you know, uh, a test failed called renders learn react link, you'll know, okay, for some reason that react link isn't showing up. Okay. On the other hand, if the string you used is something like I said before, it works well in a variety of cases, something very vague like that, you're going to have kind of a difficult time figuring out what went wrong. Okay. So that's the first argument to this test function. The second argument, as you can see, is the test code itself. Now, this is just a function that we pass as an argument. And its main purpose is to fail if something doesn't go as planned, right? And the way that this will actually work, and we'll talk about these things later, but these things here are called assertions, okay? And an assertion is basically just something that we want to be true about our code. So in this case here, it's pretty readable. We're saying expect link element to be in the document. So you can guess, that if the link element isn't in the document, that this will cause the test to fail by throwing an error. So, okay, so that's more or less how tests work. Now, in order to actually get a better feel for what it's like to just write tests and create new ones, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own tests here. So first of all, let's delete this app.test.js file because we won't be needing it right now. All right, we, we might come back and add that back when we take a look at how to actually test React components. But what we're gonna do first 
is we're gonna write some very simple code and some tests for that code. And what we're gonna be doing here is creating a function that generates numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. I'll explain what that is in just a second, although I'm assuming most of you already know what that is. So first of all, let's create a separate file for this, which we'll call Fibonacci.js. And remember that earlier I said our tests are almost always in a file with the same name, uh, except with the test prefix. So for our Fibonacci tests, what we're gonna do is say Fibonacci.test.js, hit enter, and this is where we'll write our tests. Now, the way that we go about writing our tests is really gonna depend on how strictly you wanna follow the test-driven development methodology. If you wanna follow this strictly, then you're going to want to drive your development with tests, as the name would suggest, and write your tests first. Now, I'm gonna be kind of bouncing back and forth between doing test-driven development and actual just test-following development, whatever the opposite of test-driven development would be. Um, and there's not really any reason behind doing it one way or the other uh, just for this course, because the main purpose here is to show you how to test React apps, not to make you subscribe to a specific development methodology. So anyway, what we're gonna do, first of all, is we're just gonna start off by creating our function. And again, this isn't true test-driven development because in true test-driven development, I mean, again, depending on how strict you are about it, you would generally write the test before you even write the signature of the function. But we're just gonna write the signature of the function because I think that that's a little silly for our purposes here. So we'll say export const Fibonacci. And what this function is gonna do is take a number n, and what it will do is give us the nth number in the Fibonacci sequence. Now the Fibonacci sequence, just to describe it very briefly, there are two main rules, and this is going to correspond to the two main tests that we'll actually write for this code. The first rule is that the first two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence are one, and every number after that is, this is the second rule by the way, every number after that is the sum of the two numbers that come before it. Okay, so uh, if the first two numbers are one and one, that means the third number is two, which is one plus one. The fourth number here is three, since that's one plus two. The fifth number is five, because two plus three. The sixth number is eight, three plus five, right? And you probably get the point, it goes up from there, 13, 21, 34, and so on. Okay, so this is a pretty fun little coding exercise and it'll be really nice to see how to test this thing as well. So what we're gonna do first of all is now that we have our function signature, we're gonna head over to fibonacci.test.js and write our first test. So let's start off here by importing that function from Fibonacci. Okay, so import Fibonacci from Fibonacci. And we're gonna write our first test. Now remember that the way that we do that is by calling this test function, which we don't need to import. It's provided in the runtime by Jest. And the first test we're gonna write, we're gonna just test that the first rule of the Fibonacci sequence is true, and that it returns one for the first two numbers. So what we'll say for this test, we're just gonna say exactly that test returns one for the first two numbers. Okay, the second argument here is going to be a function. And inside this function, we're gonna test our Fibonacci function here according to this string we just put. So what we're gonna do is test out what our function returns when we pass the arguments zero and one, which will be the first two numbers. So what we'll do for that is say const actual first equals Fibonacci zero, and const actual second equals Fibonacci one. Okay, so we have the actual results, and you might be wondering why I used this syntax here instead of just directly testing these function calls. Usually what I prefer to do when writing tests for my code is specifically name things with the actual and expected. You'll see expected down here later on. I like to specifically name the variables that I create inside my test cases with actual and expected to signify 
what my expectations are and what the actual behavior of the code that I'm testing is, right? This can really help you decipher tests written by other developers if everybody uses this same convention of actual and expected. So now that we have actual first and actual second, what we're gonna do is write out the expected value. So for this, we're expecting the same value for both of these. So I'm just gonna say const expected equals one. And then the way that we test whether the first and second values here match the expected value is by saying expect actual first to equal expected. Okay. And we're going to say expect actual second to equal expected as well. All right, and this expect and to equal thing is just jest as well, right? Jest makes these things available to us right inside our test files without having to import those. And all these do is throw an error if what we're asserting here, right, the statement that we're making isn't true, which will stop our tests and tell us that one of our tests failed, okay? So that's our first test. Let's run it now, okay? And the way that we run our tests in a React project is simply by saying npm run test and hitting enter. And what that'll do is go through, find all of our .test files and run our tests for us and tell us the result. So we see here that one of our tests failed, right? And since we only have one test, it means that the test we just wrote failed. Now, the reason for that is that we haven't actually implemented the function we're testing yet, okay? So what we need to do is make this test pass now. And to do that, we need to make it return one for the first two numbers. So the simple way to implement this, and this is where people tend to get frustrated with test-driven development, because in test-driven development, you're only allowed to write enough code to make the failing test that you just wrote pass. What we're gonna do is just say return one from inside Fibonacci.js. Okay, and what this will do you'll see that the tests will automatically rerun when we make a change. This is a nice feature of the Jest test runner. It'll just kind of sit there and wait for your code to change and automatically run tests on the code that was changed. Okay, and we see that we now have one passing test. So this test we just wrote, returning one for the first two numbers, is uh, seems to be working. So let's write our next test now. And for the next test, right, all we have to do is test that second condition that I talked about for the Fibonacci sequence. And that is that for every other number besides the first two, it simply returns the sum of the previous two numbers. Now, the way that we're gonna write this test is by saying test, and we're gonna say returns the sum of the previous two numbers for n is greater than one. Okay, so remember that one and zero were the first two numbers. So when n is greater than one, it, we basically just wanna return the sum of the previous two numbers. So the way that we're gonna do this now, we're going to write our test. And for tests like this, where you're really checking a lot of different cases potentially, what I like to do in situations like this is just kind of do a spot check of sorts, right? So we're gonna figure out just two different Fibonacci numbers. Okay, so we'll say const, actual, and we'll say, we'll, we'll do the third number in the sequence. So we'll say actual third equals Fibonacci called with the argument two, okay? And const actual 10th will do equals Fibonacci with n equal to nine. Okay, so we're using the zero indexing scheme for numbering our Fibonacci numbers. In case there's any mathematically strict people out there who are saying, well, but n should be, uh, you know, should be starting at one and going up, you know, we're just gonna do it with zero because it's easier. <laughs> okay. So now that we have the actual third and actual 10th results of our Fibonacci function, what we're gonna do next is code out the actual values we received for those. So we'll say const expected third and the expected third number in the sequence is two. And we're gonna say const expected 10th. And the expected value for the 10th number in the Fibonacci sequence is 55, right? If you just get a pencil and paper and figure that out, you'll see that that is indeed the number. 
And last but not least, we just need to say expect actual third to equal expected third and expect actual tenth to equal expected tenth. Okay, and if we open up our terminal again, we're gonna see that Jest has automatically rerun our tests for us and that we have a failing test again. So let's go back to Fibonacci.js and implement code, rephrase, and implement enough code to make this test pass, which will complete our function. So the way that we're going to make it so that our Fibonacci function returns one for the first two numbers and the sum of the previous two numbers is gonna look like this. We're gonna start off by saying if n is less than two, return one. Okay, so that'll return one for the first two numbers. And otherwise what we're gonna do is we're gonna say return and we're gonna use recursion to solve this. There are a lot of other ways to solve this that are more efficient, but recursion is pretty easy. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna say return Fibonacci n minus one plus Fibonacci n minus two, okay? And that should complete our function. If we open up our tests now, we'll see that it says two passed, okay? And that means that our function is complete. So, so this again has just been a demonstration of the basic syntax of writing tests and the basic strategy for writing tests. Hopefully this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.